Okay, guys, so um, I wanted to, to come to you today and kind of uh, break through a new uh, video series for you all, which is going to be called Ask Damp. So it's basically going to be a video series in which I go through some of the more commonly asked questions that I get um, for Darkest Dungeon. So family. um, just to give you some context, the quality will sound a little different. Most of these videos I'm going to try and make on the road. So I'm doing this with my laptop. Um, uh, which is pretty powerful, but sometimes the mic and, and the audio quality can be a little off. So if you're wondering, that may be why. Um, so in looking at the video itself and what this will be is I'm going to center these to about five to six questions. Try and keep it under ten minutes for the most commonly asked questions that I get. Um, so first one that I most commonly get is, Dan, tell me what the best trinkets are in the game. So generally speaking... Um, is what people typically want to know. So truthfully, the best trinket in the game right now, um, I mean, it's it's like hands down in my opinion. It's not really even remotely close. Uh, I'll show you. Um, and many of you, I'm sure, already know this. Um, and and any time this trinket comes up where you can get it, especially early game, is is a huge advantage to you if you can get it. So it's right there. It's it's the Raiders Talisman. Um, it is insane how good this trinket is, and it actually got buffed from uh, you know some of the changes that were made a while ago. So, just in looking at the trinket, it, it, I mean, you guys can see trap disarm, scouting chance, four speed, and five crit alone would have been good. Um, absolutely incredible trinket, bound to be nerfed. Take advantage of it now while you can. Uh, outside of that, I, I get asked about the most. Uh, I don't want to say the most powerful, but the most useful trinkets in the game. So in my opinion, the most useful trinkets in the game are going to center first around speed, second around crit, and then third around damage. So that's that's kind of situational to certain heroes, so that it's hard to cover. Now the one trinket, generally speaking, that I feel is absolutely insane is Feather Crystal. It applies to every character in the game, and I think speed is by far the most important aspect of... Um, any build you're trying to make with a character if you want to reduce the amount of stress that you see in your parties because you have that chance um, to go before your enemy and eliminate an enemy turn where they can cause stress or damage or crit or put somebody on death's door or whatever it might be. So the crystal in my opinion is, is still the best general use trinket in the game. Um, other ones of course are, are sun crystal, extremely powerful but again uh, there are times in which you can't always use Sun Crystal. Maybe you run out of torches. Maybe you didn't bring enough. Uh, or I'm sorry, Sun Ring. Uh, maybe you didn't bring enough. But the Sun Cloaks and Sun Rings are, are really, really good. Um, here's Sun Cloak here. And uh, I've got Sun Ring around here somewhere. Anyway, I'm not going to dig to find it. But you guys know what that is. So a couple more that I'll touch on quickly that are often overlooked. Common Crystal used to be the really one of the best trinkets in the game for early early starts. Now I'd say it's 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 actually not as strong as what it was. But if you struggle with stress, it is a trinket you can bring in and put on some of your slow guys. So to answer part of the question, I often say use trinkets that complement your character's strengths rather than offset their weaknesses. Um, usually their weaknesses are there for a reason and they're so weak or they're so bad that there's no point in attempting to counteract some of them. Um, outside of the bleed with the occultist, that's one that is more a mechanic than a, than a designed weakness. Then if you look at um, you know some of the other trinkets that could complement strengths, like for example a Vestal with healing skills, that could be good, but you gotta remember the Vestal doesn't heal that, that high. Whereas the occultist does, the occultist rolls pretty high, so you're gonna get a bigger benefit out of that. The vestal typically on the smaller heels is only rolling two to four heels sometimes, three to five maybe. And remember, all the values are truncated, meaning they're rounded down. When you look at some of these additional increases in percentages, so just keep that in mind. Um, overall, I'd say some of the dodge cloaks earlier on are very strong. Um, Solar Bracer is pretty good. These are, are probably the second best trinket in the game right now. In my opinion, if you're not running melee characters with these, as soon as they show up, they're like a must-buy in um, the wagon. 
Uh, 5% crit, 5 accuracy, move and debuff resistant is negligible. You don't really have to worry about that. So these are, are really probably the second best trinket in the game outside of the grave robbers. And they're able to be used on all kinds of other classes. So if you look at it, technically they could be considered the best. Um, going through some of these other ones, snake oil is really helpful in the early game, as is slippery boots. Um, and then going through some of the other ones, blight and the bleed trinkets are pretty strong for early to mid game and just fairly general use trinkets. Uh, but that's that's kind of a few that I'd say are, are are strong and worth considering that aren't rare, very rare, or locked on a particular character class. Um, moving on to the next one, um, I got a question a few days ago that basically said, Damp, talk to me about do you value having a particular class, having a particular slayer or hater, tactician, etc. And, and I do not value those trinkets as much as others do, and I'll talk to you why. So you basically are going to get 28 character slots, right? And there's going to be times in the game where you want to run not only champion level dungeons even after you're capped like I am, but I'm still running low level dungeons because occasionally I'll pull somebody from the stagecoach that I want to level, or I need the low level characters in order to find a trinket that I've been waiting for forever. So I try and keep that flexibility. Now by limiting one of your characters to only focusing, like most common example I can get is Crusader with Ruins Tactician, um, you know, Unholy, Hater, Slayer, and, and that's great to have it, especially when you go to a boss fight, but then you really look at him and you've locked in quirks that are specific to a dungeon and now he's less useful in other dungeons when you really need that flexibility, especially if you still haven't conquered the darkest dungeon and then you talk about going to the courtyard, you're limiting him to one area and eventually it's going to make, make it so that it's not as useful. If you want to just use him to stomp through those areas as a farming tactic, you can, but eventually you're going to get to the point where you need that slot. Now if you've modded it out to where you have infinite character slots, then absolutely. But if you're just playing general like vanilla game, then I, I would say no, it's not worth it to lock those slots in my opinion. I would say focus on their strengths, like with Crusader would be Precise Striker, probably Slugger. Um, depending on how you're going to run them, you may want Quick Reflexes, you may want Prod, it just depends on how you're going to run them. But overall, um, I, I would ignore the Slayer quirks for the most part. Um, the best quirk in the game is a question I get often, and again, there, this is going to change with the additional testing, but currently right now what I tell you is, is probably Quick Reflexes is the best um, uh, quirk in the game because it's so versatile and allows you to get such a big advantage. With that comes people often ask about On Guard, but that's only on the first turn and can actually make things more complicated when you play a Leapfrog party. It's not as valuable on healers if your party is going in there and they're already fully healed, which sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Um, so it almost makes that situational. So on guards often considered a very strong one, but it's it's not one of the best in my opinion. Um, a precise striker and quick reflexes in my opinion are the two best. Precise striker more so than the ranged crit skill because there's less people who have ranged outside of, I mean, yeah, on the Arbalist it's a must lock, but outside of that it, it's not. So, But this is valuable on Bounty Hunter, Crusader, um, Abomination, uh, uh, Grave Robber, Jester if you're still going to run Finale even after the nerf. I mean, it's so multifaceted and, and able to hit so many different characters that it, it's a must lock. So second best in the game in my opinion. Those are the top two. Um, third one I get asked a lot... What quirks do you want to allow to lock that are negative? So if I go down through here and I kind of look, um, what you want to lock are hopefully quirks that are not related to the in-game curios and that aren't related to being fearful of uh, something that you may run into in a dungeon. So kind of what you want to focus on on some of mine are... Let's see. I gotta find some. Those guys are kind of most of my higher level characters. Is what I've kind of like increased chance of losing money while gambling. That's not terrible. Um, night blindness. I very rarely run torches under you know 60 or 70 unless I'm in a particular zone where they don't apply. Um, unquiet mind is perfect because it only eliminates one place where you can't meditate so you really want to focus on these kind where it won't meditate somebody won't go to the brothel they won't do this or that because it still gives you flexibility to go to some places 
but as these lock, you aren't locking on um, quirks that are really, really detrimental as you're, you're running through a dungeon. Um, next question, uh, kind of, what do I feel right now are the top three heroes in the game? And, and this is very, very subjective, guys, so I get this so much. What's the best hero in the game? What do you think are the best? So currently, as it is right now, I think the three most valuable, not necessarily the strongest, but the most valuable are the Vestal, the Grave Robber, and the Hellion. Um, the Hellion, because it can hit the fourth row very, very hard and almost instantly eliminate um, a back row, the back row, um, which is typically where a lot of the, either the stress or the damage comes from. Grave Robber, because of, like I already showed you, how strong her trinket is, and also the ability she has to scout and disarm traps. Her crit is so high right now that it allows you to reduce stress. I mean, she is fantastic right now. And then the Vestal, because of her consistency in heals, the low risk factor with her heals make her superior um, to the Occultist still, in my opinion. And her judgment ability, I still feel, is one of the best combat skills in the game from a flexibility standpoint. Um, you can use her in any dungeon, and she's pretty strong. And uh, her camping skills, whereas they leave quite a bit to be desired, unless you're playing with only religious characters, her abilities in combat are really where she shines. So those are the top three, in my opinion, right now, to try and keep it kind of short. Um, so if you guys want some more questions, please throw them in the comments. Um, send them to the mailbox I put in the last video. Um, or come down on Twitch and you can ask. Even if I'm playing something else, I'll be happy to answer them. So thanks for watching. Appreciate all the support. I'll see you guys later.